Hey, what's up, y'all? For my next trick, I'm gonna fix this trailer. This trailer has got an interesting problem. Semi-trailer with a fiberglass roof. And the problem we got is that the trailer's good, but the roof is failing. And what my customer has found that is very interesting about these fiberglass roofs failing is the entire trailer becomes so weak. Uh, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this, but the, the walls of these trailers, once that roof fails, it is just hee hauled and whopper jawed. So that goes to show you you can see, I hope you can see how far that's leaning in right there. Uh, going by the back, you know, to the front, these things are, these walls are, I would say, at 8 to 10 inches from being straight. If you were to run a string line, uh, you would probably find places where you could measure from the string to the top of the trailer where you'd have probably an 8 inch gap. So what's really strange about this that some some of my viewers might not like is this job doesn't involve much welding. Uh, maybe no welding at all. This is something that one of my customers that I weld for approached me with something that they needed fixed. You know, do you have a fix for it? Do you got a solution? Yeah, I got, I got an idea we can give it a shot. Um, and see what it does. And my plan of fixing these trailers I have no intentions of replacing the fiberglass I'm going to replace the I'm going to replace that fiberglass roof with steel there's a local company not far from here in Beelington that makes uh, roofing uh, roofing metal and siding metal uh, they have the dies and they roll it off and make their own products it looks like this is an R panel. It's what they call an R panel. This is a structural panel. And this is actually what I put on the roof of my shop over there. I had the R panel on the roof. The R panel uh, is a little bit different than, you can see that it's different. It's a different metal, a different type of corrugation than what I've got for siding here. Now my siding the shape right here, this is what they call an ag panel. And this probably looks a little nicer, but it's not as strong structurally as the R panel like we've got over here. So I've looked at this quick, getting started on it, and the only thing I can see so far is that the, sh the screws I've got are too short. Um, there's some galvanized, uh, struts that go across the trailer, uh, that I can screw this steel down to, and the screws that I got with my order aren't going to work. They're not long enough. So there's a couple things that has to happen. One being... I've got to figure out how to straighten these walls. I can't, I can't put the material, I can't put the, the, the metal roof on the trailer until I've fixed the issue of the walls being so screwed up. Um, but once I take care of that issue and I put the steel roof on, I believe that that steel roof is going to give us a better structure than what the fiberglass did. I think it will make it stronger than what the fiberglass did, and I think we'll end up with a better trailer overall, and that's what I'm going to try to do. And, and uh, So let's get into it and see what happens. We can see from this vantage the fiberglass roof that's failing.
and I think as far as what's left of it, I'm just going to leave it and roof right over top of it. As of now, I don't see any reason to rip any more off of it. It was pretty funny when I was standing over there in the shop and I saw these guys coming with the trailer. They were coming up the road and I could see that roof just a flapping, but uh, they made it here, so that's good. Uh, I put a come along in the center and I worked a little bit on straightening things out. And when I was pulling it around, uh, what I noticed was that a lot of these crossbars, now this is a galvanized steel um, with several bends in it that make it strong, even though it's not super thick. But these crossbars were loose. And if you look right here, I don't know if you can see the rivet head right there, but there's a rivet holding these on. Uh, this one that I just happened to grab to show you isn't very loose, but I found several that were, and I found one bar that's completely missing, and I found one bar that came out and it was laying in the floor. So I put it back. The one that's missing, I think I'm just going to ignore it. Uh, I don't think it's an issue to miss, like to have one missing, but I'm going to use as many of them as we've got and what i'm doing here is i'm adding a screw to each one now i'm not saying that the rivet has failed on all of these like this one right here we come over here i was deciding i'd shoot some video but the one that i happen to show you here and here they're holding fine uh but i'm putting a screw in it anyways and I, that's just I mean, the way I think, I'm not going to try to go down through here and, and decide which one I'm putting a screw in and which one I'm not. I'm putting screws in all of them. You know, if the rivet's good, then the rivet's good, and it's got a screw. If the rivet's loose, then I'm putting a screw, and, you know, it's just not worth me trying to figure out which ones are loose and which ones aren't. I'm going to put a screw in every single one of these all the way up and down uh, whether the rivets holding or not just to make sure that that we've got this holding so the way I'm going about doing this I started out uh, running my self tapping screw and it was fine but uh, it in this position standing on a ladder it was taking a lot of upward pressure um, I did about six of them and it was no problem, but it started getting considerable amount of fatigue on me. So I got a drill bit uh, and another gun. I'm packing two guns. Actually, I'm packing three guns because I got a 22 Magnum pistol in my pocket. But uh, this Makita has the drill bit and then I've got a DeWalt with the screw bit. To, to run it in both are impact drivers and I'm just uh, drilling the hole and running the screw in and the screws going through that aluminum and into that galvanized steel so that's kind of what's going on right now and I'm going to keep with it and try to get these knocked out today I was laying out some metal and getting a measurement on the width and trying to do some planning. I was hoping to get a little better conditions. I didn't. So we're just going to deal with it. See what we can do. Well, so the current situation, I'm, I'm fixing these roofs because the roofs have obviously failed. But 
I'm on top of the roof to remove the snow, which seems like a bad idea, but uh, I'm being careful. Uh, I got my safety glasses on. Good thing I got all the snow swept off before I got started. Yeah, it's covered again. Ugh. I shouldn't be I shouldn't be complaining about this weather and I'm sorry I just missed some great video but uh we got this snow and I, I heard a noise there a minute ago and I and Tina told me this morning that the kids got off, got off school today they canceled school and I heard a, the neighbor boys a minute ago and I looked over there and one of them was running around in the backyard in his underwear um so like I don't know kids in central west virginia with a snow day they're running around the backyard in their underwear but um that's good for his mitochondria uh but anyways on this what i calculated on the ground based on the width and the three sheets i'm going to use is if i do one double overlap meaning that instead of putting the metal just over the first edge i'm going to come over the second edge on one of my three pieces and if I do that, uh, if I do that and I, and I go an inch and three quarters from this edge, then I'll, I'll be able to do this without making a big cut or a big rip cut on one of these sheets. And I'm going to try that. And I put this little square in my pocket that I set at one and three quarter. So I'm going to use it. To get this edge at one and three quarter and i'm going to put a screw just one screw in the back and probably one screw in the front and just test this so that's what that's the next thing i'm, I'm going to see uh where i end up on width and then you know with this one and three quarter i'll have a raker a piece they call a raker that that covers this edge and it'll reach down over this lip and and fastened down so it's going to be you know it, once you've got your raker in place the water would have to climb up this hill to get in and that's not how it works so uh yeah i'm gonna put a couple tacks in here and put these three pieces in we'll see where we're at so i got them pieces on there <clears throat> the three pieces inch and three quarters in from the edge like i wanted them and this is looking pretty good um uh, i'm going to make a quick note about the raker i got one of the raker raker pieces up here and i'll show you what that looks like let me flip it Sorry about all the snow. I can't do nothing but work through it. So what we're into with this raker is that my distances, my distance that, that I got right here is perfect. And I'm looking downward here and my problem with with screwing this like I'd like to is those rivets and I can't cut those rivets off so something I can do to make this one work I do feel like I could raise this up and fasten it like that so the next thing I'm thinking about on connecting that raker if we connect that raker up there at the top we gotta we gotta see if we can screw it to that and i feel like up there at the top is a place where i'm almost sure no matter how we do the the edge how we how we work the raker section that goes down the side we're going to be covering that up up there whether the raker reaches down the distance I'm thinking or maybe even reaches down farther down and, and screws to the, 
the black part of the trailer. Um, either way, I think it's going to be okay for me to go up there and drill a hole where I think I may put a screw if I had the raker the way I was just thinking of it above the rivets. And if I drill that hole, I might find out if I can put a screw in that or if that's even a possibility, maybe go inside and look and see where that hole comes out when I drill it through. But that's what I'm going to do next. So I'm up here where I made some holes and I, I was able to uh, do some testing as far as <clears throat> where I would want to screw uh, this edge raker section to the side of the trailer and we said I, I thought before that I'd be able to use these. Uh, just by raising this up higher than those rivets and screwing it right there. But what I just learned was it's very undesirable to put screws through this trailer right here. Uh, I made it through, but uh, that's not the way we want to do it. I, I tried down here and it worked great. This is an area right here where the screw is going to hold really well and drive in decent. And this is where this is where we need this surface this screwing surface needs to be down here so what i've learned is um i need rakers made that are just like these but on on this on this part that's four inches right here they need to be six uh this vertical part right here if that was six inches then that's going to allow this this bent part this bent section right here to to come down here and land where it's definitely going to be capable of missing this big bump and then that's going to put us i think in good shape to screw this on and drive a screw right through that that area there into the side of the trailer so uh, I feel pretty confident that that's the right thing to do two inches there would be the minimum obviously uh, we could go more but that would be the minimum that's all the metal on there um, as far as the, the big sheets now we're getting down to the the intricate work and uh, also there'll be quite a bit of work in screwing all this down uh, it's just kind of tacked in place with a few screws now i've probably got enough there that it's not going to blow off there tonight it's getting the dimming of the day where i'm going to be quitting soon on this and hit her back again in the morning and the problem that i've got i could tell when i was tacking these screws down there's this you know ice and snow and things in between these pieces of metal they're not going to tighten down right so i've got to come up with a plan for that so i can work on this in the morning uh we'll get that going here in a minute but i want to show you while i'm up here um 
I was talking about a piece to cap this off and I was talking about having a piece that came across and came up and went over and I got to thinking how it sure would be nice if it came across here and had a flat spot where you screw it and then came up at an angle and then went and that made me think of those rakers that I've got so let's take a look at one of those look at that aside from forget about this part but that right there is just what I need for the front of that this would be high speed low drag uh, so I'm probably going to use this one 10 footer what I'll do is I'll just cut that off right there and um, I guess I could cut it off down a little lower and do a fold in on it so it's doubled over like this is but we'll see about that um, anyway that's a good idea for that this 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 would make that front real nice this would cap it off and having that angle we'd have some aerodynamicification that'd be a good doozer so the next thing is with this weather uh you know it's going to freeze tonight it'll be in the 20s here very soon so that snow and ice that's up there now is an issue and will remain an issue uh even in the morning we might get some warmer temperatures late in the, later in the day tomorrow but if i'm gonna try to get to work screwing this down tomorrow morning something has to be figured out and i have a planification let me show you something right in there i got me big heater me big kerosene heater and the blower on that thing's like a turbo on a, on an old 7.3. It will get down, son. I'm telling you right now. That thing will put out some BTUs. So I've got it plugged in. I've got kerosene in it. And I'm going to shut these doors as much as I can shut them with the power cord sticking out of there. And I'll have that power cord. I got that power cord in the shop where... See where... If I got these doors shut this evening... Got that power cord in the shop there. When I get up about 3.30 this morning to have to take a leak, I'm going to go in the shop and plug that power cord in. This heater's going to fire up. I got her full kerosene. She's going to start making British thermal units and filling this thing full of heat, Jack. And what's going to happen is going to be a major meltification going down. And I'm pretty sure by the time I get rousted out here and, 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 and want to start getting some doozing done that snow and ice won't be an issue just swept that off a little bit she's warming up with that heater burning in there i actually ended up putting that heater on a timer uh i found a timer last night and i put that heater on a timer plugged the cord into this timer that kicked it on about three o'clock this morning and uh there was some snow and ice i was able to sweep off there i'm gonna let the heater do the rest of it and go uh get some hardware and things that i need i talked to uh company i'm working with provides this metal this morning i talked to their rep and uh they're gonna get to work on making the the rakers the side pieces that i need that reach down farther here and uh I'm probably going to be able, if things work out all right with what they got going on, I'm probably going to be able to go get those late today. They may not have a truck able to deliver them like this other metal was delivered, but what I'll do, I'll just hook the super service truck to my 20 foot trailer and, uh, and run and go get that stuff if it comes to that time when I find out they've got it ready but it's a beautiful morning and we're doing some doozing and we're going to keep doing this doozination until the doozing's done so i'm going to get some hardware and we'll see if this heater gets rid of the rest of this snow and ice 
and we'll get right to uh, fastening this down. So that torpedo heater's been running in here for several hours, working on thawing things out, and I'm making my plan as far as how I want to screw this down. We know that, uh, I know from measuring before, that these braces that I want to screw to are two foot on center. And I've found that screw right there That screw right there is in the dead center of that of that brace. Well, alrighty then, we're up here where that screw is that I said was right dead center of the of the brace underneath. So if we could go exactly two foot on center from there, we should hit a brace and be able to put our screws in here. Um, so let's figure out how we're going to do that. You ever see one of these? Yeah, it's a cheapo tape measure you can get for a little bit of nothing at Harbor Freight. I won't use them for metal fabrication work. The spring's not sp strong enough. The blade's not stiff enough. Um, not crazy about them. Doesn't mean they're useless. We're going to make good use of this cheap tape measure. I'll show you. Yeah, I did that. I just screwed that thing right down to the roof. So that's giving me a layout. Uh, I screwed that down right on the one foot mark. So, you know, I go to the three foot and drove a screw and I nailed it. Uh, I ain't fooling with making a bunch of marks or none of that. So, obviously I wanted to look how it come out at the end. Now on the very last one, it's an inch and a quarter off this comes out to this very last one where I know I've hit and I've got a good screw that's at 24 foot 10 and 3 quarters so we're an inch and a quarter off down here now is that only off on that very last one because obviously we're not two foot from there to the back or did it get that far off you know as it goes I don't know we're gonna find out I'm gonna be going two foot two foot two foot and putting screws in there and before i go real far i'll go underneath and look and see if i'm coming out in the center of those braces and see how this is going to work um now a lot of people that run this metal you'll talk to a lot of people that run this metal and what they're going to tell you is they either pre-drill holes in this metal or punch it and a, a very normal way of doing that is to lay out your material and lay out one sheet and then have it setting on top of all your other sheets and then when you drill it they would drill down through all of them and then you'll have a distance a layout and and everything on all of those sheets i don't want to pre-drill this metal i don't want to pre-drill any metal uh i've used a lot of this roofing for different purposes i've talked to a lot of people about this roofing um the most of the people that don't like using metal roofing like this is because they say it leaks at the screw holes. One of the things that I think can help you more than any with this kind of metal, use the screw to make the hole. Don't make the hole one one twenty eighth of an inch bigger than it needs to be to get that screw in there. Your likelihood of having a leak in this type of material goes way down the tighter this metal fits around this screw. Um, when I did my shop here, when we redid this shop, 
I had already decided that I wasn't going to I wasn't going to pre-drill the holes. Uh, one of the roof one of the guys I'd talked to that run that roofing told me that he didn't pre-drill holes. Although I've pre-drilled holes on a lot of the other jobs I've done with this metal, I wasn't going to do it on mine. Um, we did pre-drill the roof on this on this roof, and I had some guys helping me that wanted to pre-drill, so we did it that way. And I honestly, I regret the hell out of it. I regret letting them drill them holes. Um, I had one whole 33 foot sheet that I had to take off and, and buy a new one and replace because the holes were so screwed up. And there's several sheets before that, two at least, maybe three on that roof, where it's not drilled huge like a double hole, but it's a big oval hole that's way bigger than it needs to be. And I've got silicone sealing it and it sucks. I think the the biggest help you can give these screws for sealing is don't make a hole that's a damn bit bigger than what this screw is. I really don't think that this could leak much water without the rubber seal. As long as you don't pre-drill a hole and waller that thing out into an oval. Uh, those ones on my shop that are done that way, I don't know when it's going to be. But I'll tell you what I think. I think when I do have a, a leak in that roof, that's where it's going to be. That's going to be the point of failure with that job from pre-drilling them holes. And, and I'm very much, I, I didn't want to do that to begin with, but I'm very much against the pre-drilling now. Um, I've messed with this metal with these type of uh, metal lock screws that have the bit on them. I've done it with the sharp pointed screws. I've done it with just about every screw you can imagine. And even with the screws that don't have the bit, on this 26 gauge metal, you don't need to pre-drill. You put that screw down there and put some force on it and it'll go right through that metal. And when you're doing that and you're using the screw to tap into the metal, you're not making a hole bigger than you need and you're not making a hole in the wrong place and it's a way better way of doing it. So that's definitely the way I'll be doing it from here on out. And we'll see how this goes with this. I'll, I'm gonna put a few in going my two foot right here on this. And then uh, I'll go underneath and see how well centered in the brace. And all we can do is hope that I don't miss any of them and see how this tape measure, uh, this screwed down tape measure deal works. So we put in six screws and hit the brace every time, but coming down here and double checking, if I'd have went one more screw, I would have been too far off. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that screw is as far to the left as it can be. And still land in that middle section of that, of that brace. So obviously we need to go a little less than two feet. I put in that row towards the back, flipped this around and went that way. And what I found is as you go, you got to go a little bit less than two feet. And I'm going by feel, but as I go, based on the shape of that piece underneath of there, you reach a point where it feels like the tip of your bit kind of hit that slanted corner and you can still drive that screw but you can feel which way it leaned and by that you know if you need to go less than two feet or more well i found that you have to go less so after you put in about i don't know four or five screws on two foot on center then I was coming in about a half inch less than the two foot. And by the time I got to the end, I was coming in about an inch and a quarter. But so far, I haven't missed any braces and I haven't put any holes in that I shouldn't. And on the very first one where I learned my lesson about how it's not two foot, it's actually a little less. Uh, I've got this screw right here is I think screwed into the brace in the slanted part and the way I went about doing that is when this screw went in and I felt like it was in the slanted part and it wouldn't drill I went and got a tiny bit now that bits quite a bit smaller than the screw 
but I used that bit to poke a hole in the slanted part of that brace. And then when I run the, the screw against that hole and, and plowed through, I fixed that, uh, screwed that to that brace without an issue and didn't make an unnecessary hole. So we're looking good so far, but I'm assuming that the lesson learned here is you got to go by feel. You really got to feel what you're doing. And they are going to end up being a little bit less than two foot on center the more you go. If you do much of this kind of work, you'll use a lot of these nut drivers. It's an important uh, part of these nut drivers to have a magnet in them. That magnet holds your screw there. But as you can see, right there in that magnet, there's metal shavings. Well, when you're doing this stuff, you get these metal shavings from, from, your, from your metal, and then they get into your nut driver. Then you know you're going and you're putting your you're going you're putting your screw in there, and the screw don't don't want to set in there right. It's all wonky. Well, then you'll see guys with the end of the screw shoving it in the nut driver, trying to pick that metal off that magnet. And if you ever tried to pick metal off a magnet with a magnet or with something magnetic like a screw, it don't work. This right here is a nut driver from Malco. They've solved this problem. Malco. The magnet's in this. You pull this off, you can wipe the magnet off and clean it up. You put it back on, and then you're good to go with a nice square screw back in there. And they've fixed another problem with this stuff because a lot of times when you're doing this kind of work, You'll need a 5 16 nut driver and a quarter inch. Well, right there's a 5 16 Flip it over. Now it's a quarter inch. These are worth having. That's it for the screws. Pretty much screws every two foot except for where that one cross member is missing and uh ran the lap screws everywhere there's a lap at least every two foot these screws you see like down this row right here that's where where there's a lap and the two are screwed together how to help you know keep that from flapping and uh Next part will be figuring out those rakers for the sides. Check out these babies. <clears throat> Metal supplier came through with the new side pieces with the longer, longer side here. They've got the double fold. Double fold. Uh, on the very edges. I'm anxious to get these on there. Let's do it.
How about that, boys and girls? I like how that doozing. Well, that last piece isn't a full 20 foot, so <clears throat> figuring out how it's going to go. And uh, you can overlap this more than a foot. The, they say a foot is the minimum. And I'm looking at where this lands out with uh, brace, and it's coming out like 14.2. Uh, and if we go around four inches past the brace, that'll put us at 14.6. So the pieces I got for this, uh, I had planned on cutting them. They're 16 foot, so we'll be cutting them to 14 half feet and put them on. Got those 14 foot six pieces cut and put on there. Now we got to figure out that front piece that I'm going to make out of this 10 footer. Looking good on that front piece. There at the front, uh, that's lined up with one of the braces, cross braces. So you got a two inch screw going right there. And then on your high points, you got a lap screw. So here's the front section, which pretty much that piece caps off, you know, the corrugations in the the front of it. But what we need to do, we need to build a corner right here, and uh, you know, the corner should should cap off our side rakers. So let's do that. 